She's an author, an actress, a comedian, an editor, and a host of her very popular show, KPCC. And no wonder she's the perfect person to speak with us today, Miss Sandra Singh Lo. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. What a lovely intro. Um, I'm prepared to speak on stage, but if I need my notes and reading glasses, I'm going to go over here because I'm 52 and I'm not afraid to admit it. I didn't set out to be the poster child for menopause. That's not every little girl's or the, every little boy's dream. The word associations you have with menopause are old, crepey, dry, dried up. I know there are men here, but it's dry vagina. You hear, that's, that's all people talk about, and that, yeah, and, and many, many more things like or night sweats or bloating, and and, I, and also there's negative things about I, I'm going to lose my sexuality, my attractiveness, I'm crepey, move to the side of the freeway, let ever, let culture drive on through, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. By 2015, which is next year, brace yourself, especially you men. Almost one in every two American women will be menopausal. <laughs> you know, 50 million women, we're the, we're the largest swarm of, yeah, in, in, in America, in America. We're the largest swarm of menopausal women in history. Hear us roar, you know? And I, I, and I, I love who is becoming menopausal. Like, I'm, I'm a, gen, a, a very either old Gen X or a young baby boomer. Like, you know, Courtney Love is turning 50. So it's kind of like, that's going to be a really big hole in the ozone layer as all these little, it's like, you know, what's that going to look like, you know? So not only that, by, by 2015, more than half of all American women will be 45 or over. So we are the majority. We're evolutionary rock stars, again, as opposed to the men. We love our men, but not all, we're these amazing machines that not only can we make babies and, and then stop making them properly to extend our life, but then we can outlive the men. I mean, the oldest women today are 116 years old in America and a 116-year-old Japanese lady. And when asked her secret to a long life, she said, sushi and sleep. So that, that's a good way of thinking about it. Perimenopause, which is the lead up to it when stuff starts going up and down, can start as early as in one's 30s and last between four and 15 years. So, um, so, there's, so it, it's actually a phenomena that reaches in a lot of different places. Um, and I think sometimes there's a hesitancy of talking about menopause. Sometimes it's in Los Angeles because we don't want to admit how old we are. You know? And so I think ever since I turned 36 in Los Angeles, I was considered dead. So it's like, so now I just said my age all that time, if I can remember how old I am. 52, 52, 52. Um, and, you know, but I, I think that when you understand this process, it's actually kind of a fantastic time right now in, uh, in American history for women. And there's a couple of reasons why. I think when you look at the life expectancy of women, let's say at 48 in 1900, wasn't a good time to be menopausal because like most menopausal women were in fact dead. So, <laughs> although maybe that is better, I don't know, I haven't been there. But now we can start to think about menopause in a totally different way. Fertility is the change. And menopause is actually the return, because scientifically it's, very, it's really interesting that a menopausal woman's hormone levels return to that as a preteen girl's. So you're actually returning to the self who you were at age 12, <laughs> when the estrogen cloud came down. <laughs> Okay, and what is that estrogen cloud? What is that fertility cloud? Well, and I have a, two girls, 12 and 13, so I'm go, we're all going through it all at the same time. You know, Irma, Irma Bombeck has that great line that she says, she goes like, I'm trying very hard to figure out this generation. They've adjusted the clock for child rearing so that teaching a 16-year-old to drive and menopause will occur in the same week. <laughs> So I'm kind of like, you know, if my girls get it to get get to 16, so we're all going through it sort of at the same time. I think of it as the return. It's kind of like you lived on Earth a few years with everyone else. You went to the moon for a few years and colonized it. Good for you. Good job. 
now you're back down on earth to where you were, throw yourself a welcome home party. <laughs> you're back to yourself, or a baby shower for the new you. Because look at you, you don't have to use tampons anymore. <laughs> uh, conventional wisdom about menopause is that that's when your, your libido drops. Oh, okay. So when was my libido high? <laughs> when I was pregnant? When I was nursing? When I was going to Gymboree and trying to keep my 18 months old head up when I really wanted to be sleeping? When I stepping over toddler toys to go to date night with my husband at, you know, TGI Fridays? When was it high? I never had one. So, so why is that assigned to women at that age? Whereas I found, since starting to tour with my book and going to different places, again, the poor waiters, so I won't get too graphic, Ladies in their 50s and up are telling me they have never had as much sex with different partners, if I may say. <laughs> Tinder, okay, Cupid, whatever. And it's, it's partly because, but it makes total logical sense of kind of like when you're 25 and trying to get your career going and you're so fertile, you'll pop an egg just if you, you know, wear drawstring pants or something. I mean, those girls cannot afford to go out and have beers with some guys and look what happens. But my ladies are 50 something or 60 something, they're starting to just, you know, and well, divorce their husbands. I mean, sometimes, you know, you go, you go to the doctor and he says, I, I think you need to lose 157 pounds, and his name is Ted. So it can be that. It doesn't have to be that, but it can be that. On the one hand, we are now working, working at really you know, demanding jobs. We are also super mom parenting in a way that's beyond what we can even imagine that our mothers would never have dreamed of. We are also trying to keep our marriages fresh. <laughs> Oh my God, I pulled my... <laughs> you know, date night, once a week, you know, step over those toddler toys and like try to focus on dinner. You know, we're doing that and trying to keep our, our marriages fresh and that can be really tricky with the co-parenting that's on today to keeping it lively after 20 years can be really, you know, a, a challenge for both parties. For any of you going through this, I would recommend, like, there's a dream gynecologist that may or may not exist near you. The dream gynecologist would do what my gynecologist finally did. I didn't see her for a year because I don't like being weighed. <laughs> so I'm crying, crying, crying in the waiting room. Then I go, and they go, Sandra? And I go in. I get on the scale. Scale breaks. It's just like, oh my god. It's like, is that my weight on Jupiter? I, I've never seen numbers so high. Does it have an exponent? Is that a Greek symbol? What? So it's a horrible way. And then, and then the nurse goes, oh, I'm Sarah? Is your name Sarah? I go, Sandra. She goes, oh, no, I called the wrong person. So crying. I go back in the waiting room. I'm crying, but I'm going, at least I'm losing water weight. I'm crying. Sandra, go back on the same scale, and I am a pound and a half heavier. How does that happen? I'm not kidding you. This is what she said to me. First of all, she let me talk for 45 minutes, listening. And that's what a doctor should, somebody should do that, crying and listening, and really asking me about my moods. That was good. Then she gives this great speech, and, it's, it's, and, and she takes my hand. She says, Sandra, um, in my mind, there are two kinds of ladies or girls, chinette girls and paper plate girls. Paper plate girls, you put even one carrot on their plate, and the plate breaks. Chinette girls, you can load a lot on their plate and they don't break. So she said, Sandra, this wonderful Helen Mirren sort of type way, she goes, Sandra, I think at heart you're a Chinette girl, but right now you're having psychological responses to purely physiological phenomena. So we're gonna do two things. We're gonna see if we can take a few things off the plate and strengthen the foundation. You can use a little bit of hormones, a little bit of antidepressants, or just do nothing. When these waves come over you, just relax and know what it is. 
But you can take any of these choices and you may or may not come to, back to me. And with that, she smeared a little bit of estrogen gel on my wrist and I felt instantly high. <laughs> Although maybe just because she was being really nice to me. So I, I think that if any of the multitasking, amazing women in this room of any age from 30s on is experiencing these things, there, there is a place, there's a safe haven waiting for you. It's a gynecologist, it's a friend. My book doesn't hurt, um, but, but it will get better, so thank you.